Hey guys and welcome back to another video and as promised here we are with the Thermaster F2 210 we talked about the hardware and the great price point that they could achieve while maintaining the build quality which is great by the way performance and so on and so forth if you want to check out that video i'll leave a link down below where we talked about all these features but today as i promised on the last video we are going to talk only about the software and what we can achieve with it both on a mobile platform and also on a dashboard on a computer having in mind that we don't need to be right over here we can be anywhere in the globe and we will be able to access our network attached storage solution over mobile or over computer now having in mind that there is a lot of information guys if you are on a feeling that you want to watch something funny something entertainment this will not be it so feel free to run away right now what we are going to do is a bit boring but it's the only way that I can share with you guys what we'll be able to achieve with this Nash unit in terms of software what it has to offer or not and what we can achieve or not that being said one thing that I would like to take right out of the way is that in terms of the mobile phone app the message that I want to share with you guys is that we will be able to do exactly the same that we can do on a dashboard and this is some Thing really great because I've used several brands and most of the well-known brands are able to achieve this level but there are some brands that cannot and I'm really happy that Terramaster has been increasing their quality in terms of their applications both on dashboard and also on the app and right over here if I show you guys the screen uh, you will be able to see that for the first menu uh, we will have a very quick overview and then we have options like privileges for users groups and folders network services we have everything right over here so I'm not going to show you everything because we are going to check it out here on the screen on my computer but as you can see there are a lot a lot of options and all of them we will be able to do them on our phone or on a computer so that's the important message to take right out of the way that being said guys let's dive in into my dashboard now one thing that I would like to show before I forget is that we have a small tab right over here that will give us very briefly some quick informations regarding the uh, Terra Master F2 210. Have in mind that we are working with the latest operating system called TOS 4.1 at the moment of the recording. Of course, if you watch this one year later, they have obviously probably improved a lot of situations. But having in mind right over here, we can have this info just at a glance. If I close this and go to the admin, we will have some basic options right over here that I'm not going to waste your time. Just check it out and you will be able by yourself to tell what it is in terms of languages these are the languages available to choose unfortunately in my particular case although i use english for everything Portuguese, which is my main language is not available right over here so if terror master ever watches this video probably it would be a great idea to implement Portuguese if that's possible someday now moving along we also have the notification spell right over here and then also a a button that will show us if we have any storage connected via the USB ports that we have on the back and at this moment I've got a USB stick that I've been using just to run a couple of tests and right over here on this side we will have our shortcuts uh, we can look at this as a computer desktop with shortcuts now having in mind that when we install or when we prepare the NASH for the first time we have no uh, applications installed so these five that I just selected don't exist when you run the unit for the first time but we will show we will talk about how to install the apps just in a few moments now let's start with the file manager very quickly i can open the file manager and just drag files over very easily now uh, if i press confirm right over here it will show me the public folders and private folders that i've got and it will also show me the storage units that I've got connected via USB so this is the first option that I've got now the next one is a little bit more interesting because it talks about apps now if I open this it will show me the applications that we can install right over here I did count them yesterday and it's 38 or 40 but some somewhere between that 38 or 40 I will scroll slowly so that you guys can take a look at what we have right over here available to install one thing that i have to mention is that on the time that i've used since i used the first data master machine 
up this far and you can search on the channel they've been uh, always increasing and increasing apps that we can install so at this moment there is a lot that we can do one of the things that i always advise when you guys ask me hey robert which nas should i get my question or my answer will always go with the question which is how will you use it are you sure that you just want to store pictures or there is something right on your brain that tells you that in six months time you will want to do a plex server or anything other more complex and in that particular case think about machines such as this one which are a bit more complex but have this a great option now at this moment i only have installed five apps uh, which are the main ones that i use and i can just go here for example and use mariadb which is a database as you guys know that we use for example to create a lot of stuff but we can use it to create a kodi server i've explained this here on the channel it's a great video i use it myself and of course if you don't want to go that way you also have mb server or plex server i can open this and go to the plex server which is at this moment it's ready uh, without any movies at all but it's ready i could just add my library right over here series and movies and it would work and share to any machine that i've got on my network using this small device right over here which is something really nice now that being said moving on and closing plex because we are not going to talk about any of the apps just to show that there is a lot a lot that we can do with one of these units in terms of usability now moving to the next it's a recycle bin basically if we throw anything out of the way we will have that uh, security there if we want to grab the file that we throw it by mistake we have it there like on a desktop for example then we have the control panel which is where we are going to spend most of the time because it's where we have most of the options as we can see we have five main categories uh, privileges network settings storage manager general settings and system information one two three four five yeah that five categories if i click right over here we will have these three options i can create users i can give them certain privileges to read this folder that folder don't touch this folder for example if you work on a small company and you want three people to access something and you want two people to access something different this is the menu to use we can create groups we can create shared folders let's say that you just want one folder that they all can access with movies and so on and so forth but then there are some folders that only a particular user or a particular group can access so this is great this is present in most of the NAS that we use and it's great to see here as well it's not new Terra master has been doing this for quite some time so no surprises here in terms of network services if i click right over here we'll have the general options where we can change basic stuff like the name we'll have the network interface which basically it's the lan uh, we also have the wi-fi option but right over here it's not detected and i'm not really sure i haven't tested wi-fi adapters with this particular model but uh, Terra master states that that it is possible if you check the information right over here now it also has the proxy connection if we want to use proxy in terms of file services we'll have uh, samba which basically for windows computers and so on and so forth afp services for max ftp nfs and air sync server sorry now i could open all these and we could spend most of this morning talk about every single one of them but uh, i will talk only about the air sync server which basically for those that don't know is the ability to use this machine and other machine with the same service which is the rsync server uh, to be able to make a backup of location so let's imagine a worst scenario possible i do have two disks in raid one one is a backup of the other one so if one dies i've got the other one i also have a backup on the usb storage right over here so if both of them die i've got this backup but there is a third step to have a full complete backup which is a off location if this unit burns by any reason if the office burns hopefully not but if it does if we have the R sync enabled and if we have another unit doesn't need to be the same brand but i always advise if you have terra master then do it with terra master if you have another brand do it with another brand but we can use the service as long as it has now that's the ability to make this unit communicate with another unit on a another location and then through the web they will communicate and make a synchronization backup so if this unit burns completely and i lose two disks plus the external 
I will still have the back up there. And this basically is what our sink is made for. It's great. It's not new on Thermaster, but it's always great to see. When I see this on any units, I'm really happy because it will give us the three uh, complete stages of a complete backup solution. Now moving to this option right over here, SSH, and I'm not going to cover this. For those of you that know what it is, great. For those of you that don't, if you want to search a little bit, it's a way that we can communicate but a little bit more complex we can also use web servers if we want to and then there is the discovery service um, which basically honestly i don't use it anymore in terms of upnp and bonjour because in my opinion there are other ways that we can transmit especially multimedia to other devices plex server mb server Cody servers, we can do a lot with these machines and at this moment, 2019, almost 2020, I, I don't see the need to use a PNP anymore. It was great a few years ago at this moment, no, but it's still here, so if anyone wants to use it, feel free to do so. Now the next step is, or the next menu is storage manager. And here we will have all the information necessary regarding the disks that we are using in terms of their uh, uh, health, of what they are doing, if there's something wrong, if there's nothing wrong. As you can see on the first menu, it will show me the volume and the brief information. If I want to delete this volume and create another RAID uh, setup different from this one, I can do it right over here. If I go to my storage pool, it will show me a a little bit more of information as you guys can see i'm using the toshiba n300 discs great nash discs have this in mind if you get a nash this brand or any other brand get a disc properly for NASH units. Don't get a desktop disk because that on the long run or in the intermediate run, it will give us problems because the firmware is different and it will give signals to a NASH that ultimately will make us lose data. So have this in mind when you see disks for NASH and desktop NASH disks are a bit more expensive but totally worth it. Now, as I was saying, we have a lot of information here. In terms of hard drives, we have the overview that it will show us uh, if there's any hard drive in risk, if there's any defective. Have in mind that if there's something right over here, we have the notifications. So we will receive notifications as we will see. Uh, it also has the option for virtual disk. This is great if I want to create a virtual disk uh, for a SCSI disk, for example. There are a lot of uh, case scenarios that we can use and it's an advantage. And then we have also the information regarding the external storage and then the hot spare now the hot spare i've never tried with this brand uh, but basically it's the option to have a full copy of one of these discs and at any moment you can remove one and put that one in and have an extra layer of security i haven't tested that but i believe that it will work just fine and basically this covers the part of the storage if we go to the general settings there is just one thing that i would like to focus in terms of language this is basic hardware and power there is something right over here uh, that i want to show you which is the fan fan noise is always something that concerns me a lot i always work in silent environments like this one and at this moment the fan is working on the automatic mode so you guys i don't know if you can hear anything i can hear more the discs uh, spinning a little bit uh, the fan not at all and here just to share that we have an option to have our fan at full blast or at minimum or at the smart fan which will use the temperature of the discs to ramp up now i've done several tests and one thing that i have to mention once again is that it's very very silent so we have these three options right over here but basically if we leave it on the auto of course this depends on the environment that we have our network attached storage solution if you put this on a very closed environment very warm then it will affect the temperature and it will ramp up the fan so that it can cool the disk one is the hard drive slip we can uh, configure and this is great because uh, if it passes too long without access it leave the drives to sleep and leave the unit to sleep so that it doesn't waste energy and doesn't wear out the disks and this is great now in terms of notifications we also have options here to enable the alert notification which is this sim right over here or if you want to send always uh, to email as well and if we want to configure our smtp server in terms of security we have a few certificates right over here firewall account safeties tdos protections in terms of updates just to have an idea that we can update our 
uh, operating system or firmware if you want to call it um, very easily right over here at this moment it's running the latest version at this moment of the recording we also have the option for backup the system let's imagine that i've got everything configured my plex server my apps and so on and so forth i can do a backup and then let's say that i want to do a fresh refresh if i may say that <laughs> and what i have to do is just pick that file read it right over here and all my configurations will be instantaneously placed right up here so this is also very useful and then restore to factory default if we want to just restore it here's the option as well let's go to the home control and what we have basically then is the hardware information about the cpus and so on and so forth service status uh, in terms of the network and so on and so forth so basically a monitor that we can check out everything but as i said we have this shortcut right over here at the beginning that will give us most of the informations that we need without having the need to go uh, this deep in terms of main now if i close this window and go to the next app which is the remote access and basically here we can configure dtnash.online which will be an easier way to access our units within outside our network very easy we just have to configure right over here and that's about it and then finally we have the tos help uh, and if you are like me i hate to read manuals and quick user guides and things like that but the truth is that if we are stuck somewhere they have a very complete um, application well not application but a app that explains how this works and how to do this and to do this and to do that so if you are a beginner, for example, then probably there will be a few texts right over there that will help out. Now, one more example that I can share is one of these apps. If I open Plex Media Server, I can enter. And at this moment, it's ready to run. I don't have any movies right now, right over here, and no TV shows. But we have um, the Plex Server ready, as you can see, with channels. So it's ready to be used. I'm not going to talk about Plex. It's not the point of this video. It's a great platform. I love it, but it's not for today. And with this in mind, guys, and with a lot of minutes, I still don't know if it's someone right over there there if it is then hopefully a thumbs up to that side hopefully this video was helpful to take a better look at not only this machine but for all the machines that Tarot Master has available at this moment because all of them will be able to upgrade to the latest firmware and operating system version which is great and you will have a better idea so if you are in doubt if you want to get this machine hopefully the last video and this video will take the question out of the way either you want it or either that it doesn't fit your need then it's something that you will have to decide on that side of the screen and for those of you that didn't run away and still here a huge thumbs up to you guys once again hope that it was helpful and if it was don't forget that usual thumbs up as well my name is Huerto George and as always I'll see you guys on the next one